Κυρίε και κύριοι, καλησπέρα σα. Άλλη μια εκπομπή Ομογένεια Δολορδίνο θα σα κρατήσει συντροφιά και σήμερα και θα σα παρουσιάσει τι πρόσφατε εκδηλώσει που πραγματοποιήθηκαν στην ελληνική κοινότητα τη Μεγάλη Βρετανία και όχι μόνο. Γι' αυτό συντονιστείτε μαζί μα για να ενημερωθείτε για την επικαιρότητα και τα γεγονότα που διαδραματίζονται εδώ. Α δούμε όμω πρώτα του τρόπου που μπορείτε να μα παρακολουθείτε. Παρακολουθήστε την εκπομπή Ομογένεια εδώ Λονδίνο αλλά και όλες τις παραγωγές του Hellenic TV ελεύθερα σε ολόκληρη την Αγγλία από το Freeview στο κανάλι 264. Απλά επιλέξτε την κατηγορία International από το Vision TV. Με το Rockbox μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε όλα τα τηλεοπτικά και ραδιοφωνικά κανάλια από Ελλάδα και Κύπρο. Το Rockbox μπορείτε να το προμηθευτείτε από τα γραφεία της CETA UK και να έχετε απεριόριστη τεχνική υποστήριξη. Για περισσότερες πληροφορίες επικοινωνήστε με το Hellenic TV στο τηλέφωνο 020 8292 7037 ή με την CETA UK στο τηλέφωνο 0800 036 0078. Το application Vision TV Net μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε όλα τα προγράμματά μας ζωντανά στο κινητό, στο tablet ή στον υπολογιστή σας. Για περισσότερες πληροφορίες σχετικά με τα προγράμματα του Hellenic TV και τους τρόπους που μπορείτε να μας παρακολουθείτε, επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μας www.hellenictv.net. Σας καλούμε να μας ενημερώνετε για τις εκδηλώσεις που πραγματοποιούνται στην κοινότητά μας. Επικοινωνήστε μαζί μας και εμείς θα βιντεοσκοπήσουμε το γεγονός και θα το προβάλλουμε στο Hellenic TV. Το τηλέφωνο μας είναι 020-8292-7037 και ηλεκτρονική μας διεύθυνση info at hellenictv.net. Και αυτή την Παρασκευή στην εκπομπή Ομογένεια εδώ Λονδίνο θα δείτε τις πιο πρόσφατες και ενδιαφέρουσες εκδηλώσεις που πραγματοποιήθηκαν εδώ, στην καρδιά του Λονδίνου. Θα σας παρουσιάσουμε την ενημερωτική εκδήλωση που διοργάνωσε το Hellenic Observatory του LSE με κύριο μιλητή των πρέσβη της Ελλάδος, κύριο Δημήτριο Καραμίτσο Τζιρά. Θα σας παρουσιάσουμε αποσπάσματα από την συνέντευξη του Ευρωβουλευτή της ΕΔΕΚ Κύριο Δημήτρη Παπαδάκη, που παραχώρησε στο συνεργάτη του σταθμού μας στις Βρυξέλλες, Μάριο Καμιναρίδη. Και τέλος, πολλά αποσπάσματα από την μεγάλη εκδήλωση που πραγματοποιήθηκε στο κέντρο του Λονδίνου με τίτλο «Go Greece». Το πρώτο μας θέμα αφορά στην ενημερωτική εκδήλωση που διοργάνωσε το Hellenic Observatory του LSE στο Αμφιθέατρο του Πανεπιστημίου στις 19 Ιουνίου. Θέμα της εκδήλωσης ήταν ο αντίκτυπος του Brexit στην Ελλάδα και στην Κύπρο. Ο μιλητές ήταν ο πρέσβης της Ελλάδας στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο, κ. Δημήτριος Καραμίτσος Τζιράς, ο καθηγητής Κέβιν Φίδερστον, επικεφαλής του Ευρωπαϊκού Ινστιτούτου του LSE, ο οποίος ήταν και συντονιστής της εκδήλωσης. Επίσης μίλησαν ο Dr. James Kerr Lindsay, ο οποίος είναι ανώτερος επισκέπτης του LSE e-research για την Νοτιοανατολική Ευρώπη στο Ευρωπαϊκό Ινστιτούτο LSE, η Ελενίδα καθηγήτρια Βίκη Πράις, η οποία είναι επικεφαλής οικονομικός σύμβουλος και μέλος του Διοικητικού Συμβουλίου του Κέντρου Οικονομικών και Επιχειρηματικών Ερευνών και η Ελληνίδα Έφη Κιρτάτα, η οποία είναι CEO of Reload Greece Foundation. Η εκδήλωση ξεκίνησε με καλωσόρισμα από τον Γκέβιρ Φίδερστον, όπου στη συνέχεια παρουσίασε τους ομιλητές και το θέμα της συζήτησης. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε ένα απόσπασμα από την ομιλία του. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's uh, discussion. Some of you may be thinking it's London and Brexit, 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 Brexit. Uh, in the UK, I guess at the moment we're talking of nothing else, uh, it seems, uh, than, than Brexit. This evening's uh, discussion takes a different angle and that is to consider the implications of Brexit for, in, in uh, particular, Greece and Cyprus. That is to think of what Brexit means for our bilateral relationship with these two important uh, allies, uh, how Brexit may be viewed from Greece and Cyprus, but what scenarios for the outcome of Brexit may impact on uh, the interests, uh, the identities of these two countries, Greece and Cyprus. This evening, we have a panel 
uh, well able to guide us in these uh, discussions. I'm going to introduce them uh, in a moment, but I should emphasize that uh, the initiative for this evening also has a distinctive character. Tonight's discussion is part of a program at the London School of Economics entitled Generation Brexit. And Generation Brexit is a program that links young people in many different European countries. I think indeed in all of the EU 27 uh, countries. An initiative started here at the LSE, but something which links uh, young Europeans across uh, the continent, thinking, expressing views, opinions about what Brexit might mean. Επόμενος ομιλητής ήταν ο πρέσβης της Ελλάδος, κύριος Δημήτριος Καραμίτσος Τσιράς, ο οποίος στην ομιλία του ανέφερε ότι η στενή συνεργασία είναι προς το συμφέρον και των δύο πλευρών. Ακόμη ανέφερε ότι το Brexit είναι ένα γεγονός χωρίς νομικό προηγούμενο και φαίνεται να έγινε χωρίς αρκετή προετοιμασία από όλες τις πλευρές. Ο κύριος Πρέσβης αναφέρθηκε επίσης σε θέματα οικονομίας, στα δικαιώματα πολιτών και σε θέματα άμυνας και ασφάλειας. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε ένα απόσπασμα από την ομιλία του κύριου Πρέσβη. Good evening and uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, invitation for this invitation and I'm very pleased that uh, LSE and the Hellenic Observatory in particular uh, approached um, the issue of Brexit from this slightly different angle than the normally expected angle of a, of a university institution that is until now the focus has been mostly on uh, uh, the international relations on the international law aspects of Brexit rather than uh, the, the everyday realities. Uh, and if you think that um, Brexit has uh, taken over the public dialogue, uh, which is true, imagine uh, how this is for diplomats. Of course, m one may argue that uh, Diplomats usually thrive on crises and on difficult questions, and this is their job to discuss uh, these questions. But I, I must uh, assure you that uh, because Brexit is an unprecedented development, and because there was not enough preparation on any sides of this negotiation on, on the issue, uh, it's truly uh, overwhelming and also difficult. And in a sense, it may be dangerous uh, because um, different scenarios that are being envisaged about the impact of Brexit uh, are, you, are really uh, uh, an exercise, a theoretical exercise and not a reality. There are many ways one can approach, uh, understand, the impact of Brexit. Uh, Brexit as, as, as a development, as a decision, is a fundamental change of policy of a country. And it affects, of course, the government primarily, but it also affects business. It affects people, people's relationships and relations. Of course, the, most obvi the, the discussion right now has centered into the most obvious uh, fields of impact so um, obviously the economy, but there are other uh, uh, fields that are less discussed publicly, but are equally important, such as security, social changes, mobility, education, and culture relationship. Uh, the question there is, these relations until now have been framed or have been driven through the EU uh, policies in many fields. Uh, and one needs to know that what is stated as obvious, that the UK will remain linked to Europe, still is not obvious as a result because uh, one needs to know if the UK uh, will have or maintain will be committed to the same values that Europe, EU has now or will have in the years to come in some of these fields. And 
I'll, I'll explain a bit more what, what I mean. The other uh, level of Brexit is the, the relations between UK with each one of the 27 other member states. Uh, this is very important for Greece. Greece has a historic and very deep relationship with the UK, uh, which has manifested not only historically, but on, a, on the level of culture, uh, exchanges, business, and, and, and every field you can imagine. So um, there, there again is, is a, a very important facet of Brexit. What will be meaning what will be the future relationship of the UK with each one of the countries, in this particular case with Greece, and of course, since we're discussing about Cyprus as well, with Cyprus. Um, so it's not only a negotiation with the, the UK, with the uh, bodies that represent the EU member states, the European Commission in this, uh, in this phase, but it's also and undergoing a, a silent negotiation or prospective negotiation between the UK and each one of the 27 member states. Επόμενη ομιλήτρια ήταν η Ελληνίδα καθηγήτρια Βίκη Πράις, η οποία είναι επικεφαλής οικονομικός σύμβουλος και μέλος του Διοικητικού Συμβολίου του Κέντρου Οικονομικών και Επιχειρηματικών Ερευνών. Η κυρία Πράις επικεντρώθηκε ως επιτοπλίστων σε οικονομικά θέματα που αφορούν το Brexit. Στη συνέχεια αναφέρθηκε και στις σχέσεις της Βρετανίας με την Ελλάδα και την Κύπρο όσον αφορά στην οικονομία μεταξύ των χωρών. And ask uh, Vicky Price to start off on the economics. Uh, thank you very much. We've agreed that we're going to be doing this sitting down, which means that some of the people over there won't be able to see us. Um, apologies for this. Uh, well, I'm Vicky Price. I'm, I'm Greek, 100% Greek, despite my name. Uh, and we were asked, actually, when we're discussing this in the green room, to also add the odd personal uh, touch to this. Uh, well, I came here at the age of 17 and I studied at the LSE. I have five children and they feel just as much Greek as they feel uh, British or whatever, English maybe, Londoners. Um, and of course they were all devastated by the Brexit vote. They can't quite understand it. And I have had long dis discussions, oh gosh, this is a podcast, about my kids all becoming Greek citizens as well uh, with, with the ambassador. So we'll see what happens uh, with that. Um, so it, the young generation has certainly been seriously affected by this. They can't understand it and they're worried about the future. Uh, and my house actually right now is full of brain drain Greeks who uh, have been coming over to England for many, many uh, decades, not the ones that are in my house now, but uh, the Greeks have been. Um, and, uh, and that is a bit of a shock to them in terms of what happens next, huge uncertainty. Uh, do they need to be here on March the 29th? Uh, now, of course, that has been eased a little bit. So there was huge anxiety for everyone that I, that I was uh, meeting about this. But I think there's one, there are a few positives. I really want to talk about positives, if that's at all possible. Uh, not positives in terms of the UK's position at all, because actually all the forecasts suggest, just as the uh, ambassador was indicating, that uh, growth is going to be lower in the UK. Maybe there will be fewer people traveling and coming to Greece. There are about five million Brits who go every year to Greece and Cyprus. That's quite a substantial number. What would happen uh, to that type of income, which the Greeks in particular are relying on considerably, and of course we hear about Cyprus uh, in a minute. But one of the positive things is that I'm here talking, and I have done quite a lot of things with the LSE on, on Greece, but I'm now talking not about Grexit, the possibility of Grexit, and how appalling uh, Greek conditions are, and how badly Greece is doing. Um, but I'm talking about uh, really the problems that the UK has and how those implications could be felt, uh, felt across. And it is at the time when the rest of Europe is in a bit of a mess. So uh, again, one had to de defend the Greek government uh, and its position for some time. Uh, um, uh, the changes that happened were quite dramatic with Syriza coming in. Admittedly, they have, uh, and this is quite a left-wing government, which has put in place very right-wing policies, uh, which is quite an interesting uh, sort of political thing to observe and write PhDs on in terms of how it's worked, appalling in, in relation to the humanitarian issues in, in Greece. But nevertheless, uh, they have gone ahead and done various reforms, 
Uh, and look at what's going on elsewhere in Europe. Um, I mean, Germany didn't have a government for quite some time, had to struggle to have a coalition, and now Merkel is in trouble because of the immigration policy. Italy, complete uh, uh, you know, temporary meltdown in the markets when they thought that perhaps they were going to get a, a serious uh, Euro um, uh, or anti Euro, Euro skeptic government there. Uh, the, the Brexit itself has led to quite a lot of populist uh, movements in. Uh, Europe actually doing rather well. Uh, look at Holland, for example. It's led to quite a lot of other countries deciding that they would be pretty difficult themselves, such as the Eastern European ones. Migration has been at the core of this. Look at what's going on in, in, in Hungary and Poland and elsewhere, where they just not want, including actually Italy now, not really wanting to uh, accept what the Commission had uh, told them to do in terms of quotes. Uh, and so on, and we've got the same problem, of course, right now in Germany, where uh, the partner um, uh, body of, uh, well, rather the Bavarian arm of the CDU, which is a slightly different party, is threatening now to uh, have um, at the border controls that suggest that if you've signed yourself in, in a different country, or that's where you got uh, to when you were migrating from wherever, outside Europe, then the people should be returned back to you. Of course, that will affect Greece quite significantly. Uh, it will affect, uh, of course, Italy as well. Επόμενος ομιλητής ήταν ο Dr. James Kerr Lindsay, ο οποίος είναι ανώτερος επισκέπτης στο LSE eResearch για την Νοτιοανατολική Ευρώπη στο Ευρωπαϊκό Ινστιτούτο LSE, όπου και αυτός με τη σειρά του αναφέρθηκε σε στοιχεία για το πώς θα επηρεαστούν οι χιλιάδες Κύπροι που ζουν στην Αγγλία, αλλά και χιλιάδες Άγγλοι οι οποίοι ζουν στην Κύπρο, έχοντάς την ως μόνιμη κατοικία και επαγγελματική δραστηριότητα. Στη συνέχεια αναφέρθηκε τι σημαίνει για όλους εμάς το Brexit, αλλά και για όλους εκείνους που ζουν στην Ευρώπη. Ας περάσουμε να παρακολουθήσουμε την ομιλία του Dr. James Kerr-Lisney. Uh, James, let's move to Cyprus. Thank you very much, Kevin. And, and um, I'd also like to say a huge thank you to Generation Brexit and um, Michael here in the front um, for all the work that he's done on this. I mean, it's, it, for those of you who don't know, really go and find out more about it. it it's, it's a fantastic initiative. I was involved in another event that uh, they've done, and I, I think it, it really is opening up a debate on what's going to happen in Europe um, as, as a result of this. Um, you know, we did have this conversation before coming in here about this sort of personal aspect and, and so I'm sat here uh, on a panel about Greece and Cyprus um, and quite clearly British and in the run up to this there were a few questions, I, I, I hope I'm not giving too much away, about why am I speaking and why isn't there a Cypriot up here? But you know, there's a tendency to think of this relationship, especially here in Britain, from the Cypriots in the UK. What tends to be forgotten, and I'll talk a little bit more about this um, in, in a minute, is that there is a very large British community in Cyprus as well. And I consider myself very proudly a part of that. My family has been in Cyprus for 30 years now. I still have a brother and a sister living on the island. You know, this is something that is very, very personal to me as well. So, um, you know, before anyone sort of thinks, you know, I've got this distant academic British view of Cyprus, no, it, it, it means a lot more. So, you know, perhaps bear that in mind um, that this actually does run both ways. And it's, it's obviously not just in Cyprus, but there are British communities living in all sorts of EU member states who are going to be profoundly affected by what's going to happen or perhaps not happen next year. Um, I think the thing that I'd, I'd emphasize, and, and the ambassador had mentioned that, um, and, and it really is important to stress, is that the relationship that Greece has um, with Britain and the relationship Cyprus has with Britain are fundamentally different, and that's also, I think, reflected uh, in the Brexit process. It's worth bearing in mind that whereas pretty much every other EU member state is taking part in these negotiations in, uh, through the Commission, through Michel Barnier, um, there are three countries um, which have to open up their own bilateral discussions with the British government over Brexit. Now, of course, we've had all the attention that's been given to Ireland. Uh, the second one is Spain because of the question of Gibraltar, and the third one is Cyprus um, because, uh, as many of you will be aware, that we actually have um, sovereign bases in, in Cyprus, and I'll come to that uh, again in a minute. So, in actual fact, Cyprus, for all sorts of reasons, falls into a very different category um, than most of the other 
other 27 members of the European Union when it comes to talking about Brexit. What I'd like to do now is just really look at four different areas. And of course, you know, these are huge areas. I can only just touch the surface of them. Um, but, you know, just to, to, to lay out where I see things going in, in certain ways. Now, the first, and I, I think the most important, you know, certainly for me and for many of us in this room, is what this means to the population level. Um, you know, what does it mean for Cypriots living here in Britain, and what does it mean for the British living in Cyprus? And I think it's actually sort of worth giving some sort of background as to how large those communities are in, 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 in sort of absolute and relative terms. Now, according to the 2011 census, there were 82,295 people living in Britain uh, who were born in Cyprus. But of course, we know that the Cypriot community is significantly larger than that. I mean, nobody's got a precise handle on it, but it's, ex you know, it's estimated to be up to about 300,000. Um, now, in actual fact, as a proportion of the population, there's actually a bigger British community um, living in Cyprus. Um, the 2011 Cy Cyprus census actually showed that uh, there were 31,495 people who were born in the UK, and that's actually more than any other country in Cyprus. Um, in case you're interested, Romania comes second, Bulgaria third, and then Greece. Um, which there were 18,788 who were born in Greece. Now, of course, you would say many of those are probably of Cypriot descent. Well, I looked into those figures, and, and Cyprus is quite good at breaking down statistics, um, and it showed that about 9,000 um, of, of that 31,000 had a father born in Cyprus, and 7,800 had a mother born in Cyprus. Now, of course, in many cases, one would expect that probably both parents had been born in Cyprus. But even if you keep them completely separate, that still leaves about 14,500 people who don't have an immediate, obvious link to Cyprus, um, you know, who were British citizens living there. So um, I, I did a rough back of the envelope calculation. That's probably about one in 60 people living in Cyprus, whereas you know, Cypriots in the UK account for about one in 200. So you can see, proportionally speaking, it's, it's, it's actually quite a large um, population. What I would say immediately, and I know from very personal experience, is that we're not nearly well, as well organized um, in Cyprus as a lobby group as um, Cypriots, certainly Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots operating as separate communities are in London. The last speaker was the Greek Efi Kirtata, which is the Athenian symbol of the Reload Greece Foundation. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε ένα απόσπασμα της κυρίας Κυρτάτα, η οποία αναφέρθηκε στις κοινωνικές επιπτώσεις που έχει το Brexit για τη νέα γενιά Ελλήνων, οι οποίοι θέλουν να κάνουν καριέρα στη Μεγάλη Βρετανία. Στην ομιλία της αναφέρθηκε και σε πολλά ακόμα κοινωνικά θέματα, καθώς και στα προγράμματα που τρέχουν αυτή τη στιγμή στην Αγγλία, του Reload Greece Foundation, στο οποίο είναι διευθύνων σύμβουλο. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to the Hellenic Observatory and to Generation Brexit for inviting me, Kevin and Michael. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. Um, I run an organization which is called Reload Greece, and for the past few years we have been building bridges between Greece and the UK, and most recently between other European countries. Uh, we're a UK-registered charity which, through its programs, has educated more than 4,000 young people in Greece and the UK on how to start businesses that have a social and economic impact in their home country. So I hope to give you a feeling of what uh, these people within our community are feeling and how Brexit is really affecting them. Um, so first of all, as everyone knows, um, we really don't know what Brexit means. Um, it's quite uncertain, so practically we really don't know how to define what the impact will be to our community. But what we do know is how it's affecting people's perception of what it may mean and how both Greeks living in Greece perceive it and what Greeks living in the UK believe it means to them. So, first of all, Ad undoubtedly, the UK has always been a destination for Greeks to study and to work here. And in fact, a big portion of people who left Greece since the crisis started have come to live in the UK in search of better opportunities here. And many young people uh, left during the heated discussions uh, on Grexit, only to suddenly find themselves in a Brexit situation, um, which is now triggered in the UK 
which feels really unwelcoming and troubling, especially for this generation. It really feels like we're leaving from one uncertain environment and joining another. And sometimes the feeling is that you don't know which place you can really call home. So I just wanted to echo, um, I think, the feeling of this generation. So what does Brexit practically mean for someone who's based in Greece and how they're observing it? The feeling that I get is quite mixed. On the one hand, you have young people in Greece who see Brexit and this transition period of the next few years of uncertainty as an opportunity and as an urgency to really come to the UK as fast as possible. And a recent experience I had, which was quite shocking in January when I was traveling from uh, Greece to the UK. On the airplane, there was a young kid uh, around 17, 18 years old. His mom told him, get to the UK as fast as possible. Here's your passport. Here's some money. Go find your uncle and try to make it there. So in our generation, I don't think we've ever felt this kind of urgency to make it uh, out from nothing in a different country. And I feel like there's a lot of people who have tried to make it here as fast as possible to make sure that they can start their career in the UK. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, when you ask young entrepreneurs in Greece how they observe and how they feel and what they feel Brexit will mean, um, is their, their approach is quite different. Um, they fear that um, Brexit is actually bad because as an entrepreneur what you want is two things. The one is you want to build a business that has international appeal. So they're thinking Brexit, what, what is the relationship the UK will have with other countries? If I decide to have a base in the UK, what will that mean if I want to sell my products and services elsewhere? And so they're seeing that in a negative way. Why not start in France, in Germany, in Estonia, in another country? And the other that they're feeling is they're feeling like the culture is unfriendly because they're perceiving uh, Brexit only from the media and they're seeing um, the, only the negative effects and they're seeing a culture that is not welcoming uh, Greek people. So they're feeling like if I am to select a place to go and start my business, why do it in a culture and in a country that is um, now leaving? Um, so to them, it's something different. So the, the, it's mixed for people who are uh, living in Greece. What Brexit practically means to someone who's living in the UK, interestingly, if you ask uh, members of our community and young entrepreneurs, and from the feedback I've gathered from them over the past few years, is that they don't seem like they're in a huge concern. I think they're living in this bubble that everything will be fine. And so far as the landscape is clear for them, so, so long as there is investors who are investing in their businesses, so long as the government still keeps all the SEAS and EAS status that is helping them run their businesses, so long as they have educational programs and activities that they can take part in, it should be fine. And if you look at the UK uh, landscape, it's really helping young entrepreneurs start their businesses. Only last year, I think around 85 accelerator programs were launched to, su to support young entrepreneurs. So if these don't change in the short term, I don't think that the effect will be huge. Uh, coupled with the fact that the UK has exceptional academic institutions, and um, if you look at the facts, there's more young people who are seeking employment and to start their career here um, in, in the UK. So these numbers haven't dropped, tapping into ex the exceptional academic um, opportunities that exist. And in fact, it has become a destination for software developers. And um, in fact, London has a developer population of 250,000 people, are coders and developers here. So if you want to start your business, it's definitely a place where you can go, and um, they see this as an opportunity. A lot, uh, also, the fact that Google, Amazon, and Facebook, these huge tech di uh, giants have opened office here and are hiring people presents a good opportunity for people who are here. So in the short term, I think the feeling is that things are fine for those who live in the UK, and especially if there's a sof softer uh, Brexit implemented, uh, then, and the trade relationships uh, of the UK are not affected, then it should be fine. And in fact, speaking as uh, Reload Greece, 
We have seen an increase in the interest in our programs that run in the UK. Our recent accelerator program, which is taking place in June in a few weeks' time, uh, we had a 45% increase in the applications that we received from uh, young entrepreneurs coming from Greece and internationally. Ολόκληρε τι ενημερωτικέ ομιλίε θα σα τι παρουσιάσουμε στην εκπομπή με το φακό τη Hellenic TV.